Hi, my name is Chelsea, and this is my love story. Not many people think their soulmate comes with wheels stuck to their butt, but mine does. James is a high-level paraplegic, and we met on the dance floor six years ago. Through ups and downs and many memories later, we are about to embark on our biggest adventure yet. Having a baby isn't going to be easy, but as long as we have each other, I think we're up for the challenge. It's really cliche to say that there were fireworks. I felt like as soon as I met James, I that would be it. I haven't told anyone that. I don't even think I told myself that. I do remember just being like, I'm going to see this guy, and then that's going to be the rest of my life. Chelsea's my partner, my kind partner, my girlfriend, my confidant. She's my, she's my girl. He's got this demeanor that's very dad-like, and uh, he's kind of a dad to many people, which is why I want to have a kid with him. <laughs> I'm looking forward to being a father. I mean, if that's what it is, it's a little scary. There's no doubt about it. Um, do I think that I can do it? Absolutely, I do. I love challenges, so, you know, it's this is a challenge that you can't fail at, though, so. <laughs> Before we even begin telling this story, we might as well answer that one thing that's been on everybody's mind. Sex. Everybody wants to talk about sex, baby. <laughs> Let's talk about you oh and me. Oh my goodness. No? <laughs> of course we still have sex. Do you guys have sex? Is it weird? Sex. sex is sex. So. <laughs> <laughs> and we have sex that's maybe a little bit different mm -hmm. than the average. We're in bed, we're both there, we got parts that work together well. Do you want us to talk about like orgasms and stuff or no? Yeah, sure. Not really. <laughs> you don't want to talk about that? I long enough to ask the person that receives all the pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> After my accident, I think it's way better for her. <laughs> I actually feel pretty uncomfortable right now. <laughs> <laughs> That's insane, you can even do it one-handed. <laughs> it's like something you do your hair with. <laughs> your hair straightener. <laughs> They're vibrators and they're used to make our partners ejaculate. We have grossly TMI uh, shared this one. <laughs> I don't even know why it's duct tape. I didn't duct tape it. This one is how Oliver was conceived. <laughs> Side note, I can see the reflection of my squash in the stove and it looks like a penis. <laughs> Having someone like Sam to relate to has changed my life. Seeing her and Sean have success has given James and I hope, but also makes me wonder, when will it be our turn? After many failed attempts at home, we visited the specialist down in Vancouver two years ago. I've got the sperm in my sweater. This is the weirdest thing I've ever had to do. We successfully extracted 10 vials of sperm, which have been frozen until now. When we want to do IUI, so intrauterine insemination, ideally we want to have 5 million motel or more. We have 10 vials or 10 units of sperm in cryo. So that means we have to take a big percentage of these 10 fairly precious important vials in order to do one IUI. That is only one try. Okay. So that's my only hesitation, you guys. If there's any chance we could produce a fresh sample, we might be able to do that a few times. We just might need a little bit more assistance from the team down in Vancouver and Dr. Elliott's group to help us figure out how to best do that or how to exactly. best accomplish that. This seems like a good time to lay out our options. At this point, we have two procedures to choose from. One is an intrauterine insemination, also known as an IUI, or as we like to call it, 
the turkey baster method. An IUI involves taking James's extracted sperm and inseminating my uterus with a long syringe. The other is in vitro fertilization, or IVF. Simply speaking, this procedure involves taking my egg and James's sperm and fertilizing the two in a lab. This creates an embryo, which is then implanted into my uterus. James and I have chosen to go with the turkey baster. Everybody says it'll happen when you stop trying, but it doesn't really work like that when you have a spinal cord injury. If you stop trying, it, there's no way it's happening. It seems like the only people that get pregnant easier are drunken high school kids. Pretty much. <laughs> Sorry, drunken high school kids. <laughs> I wonder what our neighbors think we do. So we're heading out to Vancouver tomorrow and we're doing a sperm retrieval. Feeling I'm a little bit excited, but um, if it doesn't work, a little bit upset, no doubt about that. Next step, here it comes. What should I wear when you get ejaculated? Should I wear something sexy? I got the camp pants, I got the camp pants on. Make sure you're really happy that day so the sperm don't come out angry. Think calming thoughts. <laughs> okay, babe. You guys, zip it. The young one's a wild one. <laughs> well, absolutely, people in wheelchairs can be parents. And good parents. So when I was like first injured, I had, I had no idea that I'd be a dad, I thought that, that maybe was over or wasn't in my cards. I was 34 when I was injured in my accident. It's such a whirlwind when that first happened that, I mean, everything is just going through your head. You don't really know what you're gonna do, you know, let alone be a father and a husband. Totally right. hands-on dad, for sure. So then it was just kind of how was that gonna play out when he was in a chair. A little bit tougher being a sideline coach. I felt like he didn't know what he was getting into. You're wanting to be the best parent you can be, right? And you know, you, you tend to think you're, you know, you're not measuring up to the Joneses in the parenting front because you're in a chair. I knew I could be a dad, but could I, could I be the dad I wanted to be? I wasn't sure. My testicles are all tingly. <laughs> It's like they, it's like it knows something's happening. Something's <laughs> Are you gonna, serious? Yeah. Running late. Here we are. So hopefully we can use this, you know, time again as a, you know, just really try and figure out exactly what you're doing. Okay, so now we need to get your clothes off. This is the magic one. This is the one that they don't sell on the market. <laughs> I always say it looks like you guys are going to Niagara Falls. <laughs> How are you doing? Are you okay? Yeah. Well, you know what? I think we could do this all day. Yeah. What happened? Didn't work. What does that mean? Um, I don't know. I don't know what it means. It's okay though. It just sucks because you have to you have to drive so far <laughs> for something not to work. feel more bad for him. It's a little disappointing, no doubt. 
you drive all this way, you spend a couple days and all that, and yeah, but you know, it's, it is what it is. You learn. I feel, I feel like I maybe put too much pressure on you. Oh, whatever. I can handle it. And when things aren't working, once, twice, three times, it starts to affect you. It really does. And then you have to deal with the emotional hangover part of that. And like, okay, let's do this again. And I'm gonna be positive and, you know, we're gonna have kids. But then you're like, maybe we're, maybe we can't. I need to talk to someone who's walked in my shoes. Janine's husband has MS and they left no stone unturned to try and have a baby. Unfortunately, it didn't work out for them, but they are seriously the happiest couple I know. So how many times did you try in vitro? In vitro itself and the implantation, I think we did four in total. And that's when we just said, you know, this is, this is a lot. Back when I was going through the process, I didn't think anybody else was going through the process because it wasn't something you talked about. So when you tell me what you're going through, I feel almost empowered and validated at that this was very, very real, very, very difficult, very difficult. I remember feeling, oh my goodness, am I less of a woman? And mm -hmm. I've had people, believe it or not, say to me, wow, you don't have children, that's selfish. <sighs> yeah, and, and that's okay. People are people and people say stuff, you just get over it. But there, ha there was times, definitely, where I turned down invitations there's yeah. times where we left parties early when there was a lot of our friends with their kids. There's, there's emotions that come up that you didn't know you had. Grief is, a, is not linear. And yeah. so there's ups and downs. And I had, I had moments where I would, you know, oh, you're going to make me cry. Uh, <laughs> where I would, you know, two years later, I would mm -hmm. maybe see something that yeah. would just trigger something. And oh. I, would, I would feel sadness. But I also like that because I think that makes us human. Yeah. It makes us recognize that we have those emotions and it's okay. Yeah. Yeah. We can give you a hug. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, thank you. Oh, <laughs> I need that. Even though Vancouver didn't go as planned, we still have one attempt at an IUI. I didn't quite understand how hard this was going to be, but with the support from all our friends, James and I are feeling optimistic. Sean has definitely come into his own since Oliver was born. And like this kind of stuff, it's just, it just makes me happy. No, I, I thought it was only sort of great that you were in a chair because the kids were so happy sitting on your lap. They're my, my uh, inspiration, I guess, is I have to do it for them because I'm their dad <laughs> and husband, so. Being a mom in a chair is, <laughs> I think, made 90% possible by the internet. Uh, and finding online groups and connecting with women literally all over the world in chairs who are doing it. My youngest son at one time made a comment, when I become a dad and get my wheelchair, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like a natural stroller. We didn't even have to buy one. It's awesome. My built-in stroller. Is it worth it? Oh yeah, absolutely. It's <laughs> good to see the little bastard smiling and all that and being happy, so. <laughs> It's 6.30 on a big day. What's happening today, babe? Our first IUI. Uh, I'm excited to try and have a baby with you. Sounds good to me. Found a place to hide for a little while. A little sanctuary where I can empty my mind My only destination is to find some isolation here A moment of meditation to render my mind clear So I sit on my stone and watch the waves roll by From the game of thrones and the words upon the sign Telling me don't cross that line I love your heart the most. It's, you're 
the most kindest, just loving person I know. Mom. Amazing. Mom. Amazing mom. He's the same today as he was yesterday, and he will be tomorrow, and he is a rock. And that's what I need in my life. I just love her um, attitude, you know, when she comes in the room, she lights it up. Yeah, just... Uh, Don't cry. I do, I do respect her a lot, as a mom and a wife, and uh, for hanging in there with me all these years, and, you know, because it, it can't be tough as a, as a wife. It's gotta be, you know, it's a completely different life. She's really caring, and she's just, such a good person and I, I think if she can instill just any even a fraction of the qualities that she has that we're gonna raise some pretty good little humans you're a very good dad do anything for them emotionally I don't know you're a good dad you're a good husband you're a keeper I think it brings out a lot of his really good qualities because he can really show them how to do things and I don't know he's just got the patience of Job. <laughs> it's like insane. <laughs> You're making me cry. <laughs> I can't <laughs> She's the greatest. <laughs> but oh no it's just incredible. I see that now with our grandkids again too and it's so unbelievable. I love it. I absolutely loved you in the father role. Absolutely. Okay, <laughs> let's do this. Oh, I didn't think I'd be nervous. Yeah, I'm a little more nervous now than I probably have <laughs> ever been. <laughs> okay. Well, no matter what happens, I love you. If it's positive or negative, it's all positive. Ooh, that's right? good. Yeah, <laughs> I can't beat that. And um, there's no one else I would rather be going through this journey mm. than with you. Me too. You're the only one. Well, if this is a positive, then there's no doubt you will be an absolutely unbelievable mom. Aww. And this little human being would be very lucky, very fortunate to have uh, to have you raise them. <laughs> so yeah, I'm looking forward to this. Let's see what we got. Okay, I love you. Okay. No matter no matter no what. No matter what. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a lottery ticket or something. <laughs> Ooh. That's surprising. Yeah. I am very surprised with that. I thought we did it. Pretty darn sure. Oh, babe. okay. This is life. This is a blip in time. There are going to be hurdles. There are going to be challenges. 
But what's amazing is that we're all in this together. Everyone has a story. Everyone is fighting a battle we don't know about. We need to open up. We need to talk to each other. You are never really alone. Find your tribe. Find your people. Find people who lift you up, who elevate you, who talk the talk and walk the walk. Or, you know what I mean. As for James and I, we'll keep rolling along. Our journey isn't done yet. And one thing is for certain, whatever life throws at us, I know we don't have to face it alone. But I know I love you. And that may be all there is to know. Yes, that's it. (laughs) (laughs) If I run and you roll, is it safe that I know you're coming along? Chase you just for the fun of it all And I can go a little faster So go a little faster And I'll stop you just before the road Does it scare you to know That I've known straight from go We're gonna build a home